ഹ <laughs> الوتر حق فمن لم يوتر فليس منا الوتر حق فمن لم يوتر فليس منا الوتر حق فمن لم يوتر فليس منا رواه ابو داود صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين ഹീമ <laughs> My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam we continue inshallah with salah other than the faraid other than the compulsory salah we mention about the sunnah and the nawafil salah we continue with the chapter of witr and uh, the witr salah the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has been heard saying al witru haqqun that witr it's a right it's a duty fa man lam yutir fa laysa minna whosoever does not do the witr salah they are not from amongst us al witru haqqun and fa man lam yutir fa laysa minna and nabi alayhi salatu wasallam he repeated his statement three times and hence the reason why with regards to the witr salah according to imam abu hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi it is wajib it must be done and wajib is not considered to be fard wajib is not considered to be sunnah but it is a stage above sunnah and a little underneath fard little underneath fard means there is a distinction between fard that is something that has been revealed in the holy quran it is something that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned it is mutawatir he mentioned that it is a law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can deny five times daily salah no one can deny that comes from the hadith that it is five times daily salah in the holy quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says establish salah wa ruka'u wa sujudu make ruku and make sujda wa ruka'u ma aw raqi'in bow down with those who bow doesn't mention how many rakats doesn't mention how many sajdas but nabi alayhi salatu wassalam outlined that it is compulsory it is fard two rakats are fard fajr four rakats of fard duhar four rakats of fard asr and like that we know what is compulsory with regards to the sunnah and the nawafil that we have mentioned nabi alayhi salatu wassalam sometimes he performed them sometimes he did not perform them sometimes he emphasized its performance the sunnah especially we spoke about that nawafil Sometimes Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam did it sometimes he didn't do it sometimes Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam used to do it continuously because he was the prophet of Allah whenever he started something Hazrat Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha says he never used to like to leave it off 
So he used to do it constantly. With regards to the Witr Salah, the other scholars like Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi, they are of the opinion that Witr is Sunnah, but it does not mean in any way that they do not emphasize that the Witr should be performed. The ikhtilaf is only that they are of the opinion something can either be fard or it can be sunnah. And there is no daraja in between which is something ijtihadan. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi is of the opinion between the fard and the sunnah there is something called wajib. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized it more than the normal sunnats. He emphasized it more than the normal sunnats. Like this hadith, Al-Witru haqqun, Faman lam yutir falaysa minna, Whosoever does not do it, they are not from amongst us. Other, I, other traditions, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Inna allaha witrun, yuhibbul witr, Fa'awtiru ya ahlal Qur'an. Allah is odd. He loves that which is odd and therefore perform the witr, O people of the Quran. And there are different traditions that the commentators have used. Some of them we will mention, inshallah, the fuqaha have used to show that the witr salah in itself it's very, very important and cannot be left out. So much so. A hadith reported by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man nama anil witri aw nasiyahu, fal yusalli idha dhakara aw idha staiqada. Rawahu tirmidhi. Whosoever sleeps away from the witr salah, or he forgets it, let him perform it when he remembers it, or when he wakes up. Let him perform it when he remembers it, or when he wakes up, very, very stressed, the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized that it must be performed even if you forgot it. Or a person slept away and they didn't perform it, perform it when you wake up. That shows a greater emphasis than Salat al-Awwabin that we have mentioned about. Shows a greater emphasis than Salat al-Chasht that we have mentioned about. Shows a greater emphasis than Salatul Ishraq that we have mentioned about. Because there is no need to make qadha of Salatul Ishraq. If a person does not do it, the four rakats of Salatul Ishraq, two rakats, two rakats, or two rakats according to some riwayats, there is no mention about making qadha of it. And Allah knows best with regards to that. But with regards to the witr, imagine. Riwayats are mentioned about what? Making it up if a person does not do so. Hence the reason why Ahnaf are of the opinion and they have emphasized that it must be performed so much so. Remember under the chapter of Qadha ul Fawa'it, making up of the Qadha Salah, if a person is known as Sahib al Tartib, they have never missed six Salah in their life or they have missed six Salah in their lives. And they have now performed them as qadha. And every salah they are performing one by one, mashallah, they have not missed any more in their life, the lives they have made up for whatever they have missed. No more as a, a debt on their account. Now they miss the witr salah, they have to perform, they, and it's fajr time. They overslept. They thought that they would have awoken in the night and performed the witr. But they did not, they sleep, sleep overcame them, they did not wake up. According to Ahnaf, based upon traditions like these, they will perform the witr salah firstly. Because witr is wajib, it's essential, they have to perform it. Right? And what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those traditions that indicate that it is sunnah, it means yes, it is established from the sunnah. Just as the other wajib elements of salah, it is established from the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, eh? the ahadith. But there is a daraja that goes beyond that. Or let's just say we mention 
unemphasized sunnah, and we mentioned about emphasized sunnah. Beyond that, there was something that was more emphasized than the emphasized sunnah, like the witr salah. And the ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives indication of that. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, he would wake up his wives to perform the witr salah. And although sometimes, yes, there may be tradition, traditions that he would wake them up to perform the tahajjud salah, that was not on a continuous basis, but it was to show them the importance of the tahajjud salah, show them the importance of spending your time properly, use the night wisely. Perform the tahajjud salah. But for the witr salah, it shows Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he would be performing his tahajjud salah. And then in the end, when he had to perform the witr, he would wake up his wife. Hadha Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to perform the witr salah. So there are many traditions that indicates that the witr salah is wajib, which is close to that of fard. To leave it off is a major sin. Based upon the emphasis that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam has mentioned, even with regards to its qada. And if one has missed it, they should perform qada as soon as possible. If one has made qada, if one has missed it, they should make qada of it as soon as possible. Witr salah comprises of three rakats. After offering two rakats, one should sit down and read the At-Tahiyyat. The Darud should not be read. Instead, one should immediately stand up after the At-Tahiyyat. One should then read Surah Al-Fatiha and another Surah. Thereafter, one should say Allahu Akbar, raise the hands to one ears according to the Hanafi jurist, and up to the shoulder if it is a woman, and then bring back down the hands, clasp the hands again, and recite Dua ul Kunut. Thereafter, one should go into Ruku, complete the third rakah, sit down for at tahiyat recite the Rood, do, recite the Dua after the Darood, and then make Salams. Witr Salah, according to the Hanafi jurists, it's three rakats with one Salam. Three rakats with one salam. And to make a long story short, there are a hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that gives an indication that he made witr with one rakat. Or he sat after the two rakats, gave salams, and then stand, stood up to perform one rakat. Sometimes the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it so to say purports that meaning. However, my dear respected brothers and sisters, according to the Hanafi jurists, this does not mean that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed two rakats, two rakats, and then he stopped and performed one rakat as witr. What it means is that the traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are many. He it mentions he performed different number of rakats, 11, 18, Eight rakats, different amounts. And what the commentators have mentioned, and the Hanafi jurist, is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be performing his two, his two, his two, his two. And then when was the time for witr, he would perform one in addition to two. And he would make it three. He would perform one along with the two to make it three. But even then, it's not that he said salams after two rakats and then he stood up and performed one rakat. Why does the Hanafi jurist mention this? Because Rasulullah has also forbidden the salah of Butaira, which is to perform one rakat of salah. Right? There are different dalils and proofs why they are of that opinion, but as we have mentioned, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he has performed three rakats. What gives indication to this also? There are traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which has outlined what he would recite in the witr. For example, 
First rakat, sabbih isma rabbikal a'la. Second rakat, kul ya ayyuhal kafirun. Third rakat, kul huwa Allahu ahad. So these ahadith gives an indication that witr is three rakats. And there are clear ahadith that gives indication that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would perform three rakats with one salam. He would perform three rakats with one salam. And uh, as we have mentioned, all those different adilla about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing seven rakats and eight rakats and eleven rakats, those are the majmu'i, the totality of all the rakats he used to perform in the night. Salatul Layl, he used to start with two rakats, light rakats, then he would perform eight, six rakats after that, eight rakats, then the three witr, some mentions two rakats after the three witr, then when the dawn broke, he would perform two rakats again. A hadith that is reported by Hadra Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim, from, she was asked by Abu Salma ibn Abdul Rahman, how was the salah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan? And she said, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to increase in Ramadan, he would not increase in Ramadan or out of Ramadan more than 11 rakats. He would perform four rakats, do not ask about its beauty and its length. And then he would perform four rakats again. Do not ask about its beauty and its length. And then he would perform three rakats. Then he would perform three rakats. These three rakats are the witr salah. And uh, other traditions, Hadha Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned clearly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would perform the witr with three rakats. And... Uh, there are other traditions on this line, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Even there are traditions which give indication that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would perform the witr salah and he would make it, he would only give salam in the end. And there are many of the sahabas radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een who are of the opinion that witr salah is three rakats with one salam. Three rakats with one salam. And uh, as I have mentioned, they give interpretation to those ahadith that gives an indication that witr salah is one rakat. It's not just one rakat, it meant that after the two, 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 Nabi alayhi salatu was salam performed three. But in addition to two, there would be one. Not that he performed two, made salam and then perform one rakat. And this is how the Hanafi jurists have explained it. And in the three rakats, these three rakats, according to the Hanafi jurists, are performed by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha firstly, and then another surah in every rakat. Surah Al-Fatiha, and another surah in every rakat. The first rakat will be performed as normal, second rakat performed as normal, after the second rakah, a person will recite at tahiyat until the end. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And then stand. Do not recite the rood. And then a person will perform the third rakat. In the third rakat, a person will recite Surah Al-Fatiha, another surah, and then they will recite Dua Al-Kunut. Then they will recite Dua Al-Kunut. We will just... Read it inshallah. We can find these du'a ul-kunuts in books 
on the internet inshallah we can try to learn them we will re we will come to know inshallah about the substitutes of them if we cannot recite the lengthy dua dua al kunut is as follows allahumma inna nasta'inuka wa nastaghfiruka wa nu'minu biki wa nu'minu bika wa natawakkalu alayka wa nuthni alayka al khair wa nashkuruka wa la nakfuruka wa nakhla'u wa natruku ma yafjuruk Allahumma iyyaka na'budu wa laka nusalli wa nasjudu wa ilayka nas'a wa nahfidu wa narju rahmataka wa nakhsha athabak inna athabaka bil kuffari mulhik This dua is recited in the third rakat after we have recited surah al-fatiha another surah we will say Allahu Akbar raise our hands to the ears tie it back band it back put our hands together again and then recite this dua after this dua then we will go into ruku allahu akbar after this dua we will go into ruku if a person forgets to recite dua ul kunut in the third rakat and remembers when he goes into ruku he should not recite it now instead he should make sajda to sahwi at the end of his salah if a person reads the dua ul kunut after standing up from ruku even then his salah will be valid but it is preferable not to do so in any case it it will still be wajib on him to make sajda to sahwi If a person forgets and did not recite dua ul kunut in the third rakat, forgot unintentionally, then they go into ruku. Sami Allahu liman hamida. No problem. They forgot. Do not recite it now when they come up from ruku. Go straight into sajda. And at the end of the salah, make sajda to sahwi, inshallah. The sajda of prostration, why? Because dua ul kunut is wajib. Its recitation is wajib. And therefore, if a person does not do it, to mend that mistake, they can do sajda to sahwi. But what has been mentioned here is that the place for kunut is not after ruku, it's qabla ruku. The place for dua ul kunut is qabla ruku. There is some, the, another kunut which is known as kunut in nazila. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recited this in the fajr salah, ba'da ruku, after ruku. This is called kunut in nazila, according to the Hanafi scholars. So therefore, Kun, kunut al witr is before the, before the ruku, and kunut al kunut al nazila is after the ruku. So, if a person misses it before the ruku, then they will just leave it off and perform such that as sahwi. Again, the ruling of witr, the, uh, the ruling of wajib, is that if a person omitted it intentionally, then they will have to repeat the salah, right? If they left it out intentionally. But even then, if a person were to recite it after the ruku, the salah will be valid and they will have to make such that a sahwi. If a person forgetfully reads dua ul kunut in the first or the second rakat, this is not considered. He will have to recite it in the third rakat and also make such that a sahwi. A person thought that their second rakat was the third rakat. They recited dua ul kunut. And then they realized this is the second rakat. No problem. They will have to recite it again in the third rakat. And then do sujood al sahwi in the end. Because they have delayed the arkan of going into ruku. By reciting a lengthy dua as kunut al witr. So... Although they may have recited Qurut al-Witr twice, it would not invalidate the salah, but 
it would mean that they would have to perform sujood al sahwi If a person does not know Dua al kunut he has the option of reciting Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab nar If a person does not know Dua al kunut he can recite this Dua Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab nar or he could recite the following three times. Allahumma gfir li, Allahumma gfir li, Allahumma gfir li. Or he can recite, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. He can recite, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Any of these that he recites, inshallah, it will be valid. But it goes in order of preference. If a person knows Dua al kunut it is best to recite it like that. If not, and a person knows Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, no problem, they can say that. If not, Allahumma gfirli three times. If not, Ya Rabbi, three times insha'Allah. With regards to Salat al-Witr, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he used to make it the last salah of the night. He used to perform the salat al-witr. In the last portion of the night. And he mentioned in traditions more or less something like that. Right? Make the last salah of your night the witr. And this is where sometimes the question comes up about... Well, if a person perform the witr, can they get up and perform tahajjud salah? Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said, Ij'alu akhira salatikum bil-layli witra, rawahu Muslim. Make the last of your salah of the night witr. So that is best. A person, inshallah, if a person knows he will wake up for the salat al-layl, then he can leave the witr salah until when he wakes up, perform his tahajjud. Some people, mashallah, habitual upon that. If they can, do so. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. If not, a person can perform their witr before they sleep. And these are even advices that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given the companions. Hadha Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala who says, Qala awsani khalili bi thalathin. My friend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has advised me three things. Fasting three days from every month, performing two rakats of salat al duha and that I do the witr before I sleep. That I do the witr before I sleep. And the companions had two different patterns. Some would perform it before they sleep, some would perform it when they wake up for qiyamul layl. And if we are not certain, we will not wake up. It's best to perform it before we go and sleep. Least we miss it, insha'Allah. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam also in a tradition says, Man khafa Allah yaquma min akhir al-layl fal yutir awwalahu. Whosoever fears he will not stand in the last portion of the night, let him perform it in the beginning portion. All these traditions, my dear respected brothers and sisters, gives indication that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized its performance he emphasized its performance and he said badiru as-subha bil witr hasten the morning prayer with the witr a perform it before the morning comes in do not wait till the dawn breaks and then perform the witr that will be performing it as qada perform it before perform it before the dawn comes in the break of dawn when fajr time comes in so, witr salah can be performed before we go to sleep or inshallah, if a person knows they will wake up and perform qiyam layl tahajjud salah, they can perform it afterwards. After the witr salah, it is mentioned that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would recite Subhana Malikul Quddus 
three times. Subhana malikul kuddus, three times. And uh, there are other traditions that give the indication that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if a person was fearful that they may not be able to wake up in the last portion of the night and perform tahajjud, he said, perform two rakats after the witr before a person sleeps. From Thawban radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, Inna hadha sahara juhdun wa thiqlun fa idha awtara ahadukum fal yarka' raka'ataini fa in qama min al-layli wa illa kana talahu rawahu darami He said, wakefulness is a rigor something and it is burdensome. When one of you observes the witr prayer, he should observe two rakats. And if he gets up in the night to observe tahajjud prayer, all well and good. Otherwise, these two rakats will suffice for him. And this is where we mention, this is why sometimes on a salah chat, you will see after the witr salah, there are two rakats. It is evident, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, used to perform two rakats after the witr. Hadha Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, has mentioned أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصليهما بعد الوتر وهو جالس يقرأ فيهما إذا زلزلت الأرض زل وقل يا أيها الكافرون رواه أحمد نبي عليه الصلاة والسلام used to perform two rakats after the witr in a state that he was sitting and he used to recite in them إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها عن كل يا أيها الكافرون so these are different guidelines, my dear respected brothers and sisters, with regards to the witr salah. In this final point we made, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, it's a good habit, inshallah. Yes, mashallah, we want to perform salatul layl, but not every night possibly we may be able to wake up. We want to perform the tahajjud salah. So therefore, mashallah, if we perform two rakats after the witr, it can suffice for us, inshallah. And there are traditions that indicate that Nabi alayhi salatu was salam would perform these two rakats in a sitting position. And although, of course, yes, he did mention sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that performing salah sitting, one would get half of the reward of performing it standing. From amongst the akabir, there was one of the mashayikh who used to perform it sitting. Why? He said, I love to perform the sunnah the nafil salah, just as Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, used to perform it. So there is no problem if it is performed in a sitting position, inshallah. It could also be performed in a standing position. There is no problem with that. There is no hard and fast rule with regards to that, inshallah. Right? So the witr salah, it's wajib. If we don't perform it, we will, it, it is sinful if we do not perform it. Comprises of three rakats. With one salam in the end of these three rakats, it is sunnah. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam used to recite, Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la, first rakat, Kul ya ayyuhal al-kafirun in the second rakat, in the third rakat, Kul huwa Allahu ahad. In the third rakat of the witr, kunut al-witr will be recited after Allahu Akbar. After Allahu Akbar. And uh, witr salah, it is essential, wajib according to Ahnaf. It's not that it is fard, so much so that it is performed after. It is performed after the fard of Isha. We cannot perform witr before Isha. This is a dalil also to show, according to the Hanafi jurists, they do not mean in any way they are increasing upon the fard. No. The fard salah are there. No one can change that. That is established but with regards to the witr it's perform it's wajib and it is performed after the fard nabi alayhi salatu was salam also mentioned if we know that we cannot perform the witr in the last portion of the night perform the witr before we go to sleep and it is also mentioned that we can perform two rakats after the witr if we feel that we will not wake up to perform the tahajjud salah right so 
these are a few guidelines with regards to the witr salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq inshallah to understand them, implement them into our lives inshallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallah wa bihamdika wa nashiru wa na ila anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Subhanallah rabbika rabbil azati a'am isifun Salaamun ala nusul alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Jazakallah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Oh